All right, welcome back to Cymax channel. This has been uh, a video a long, long time in the making, uh, maybe six, six or nine months or so. Um, today I want to talk about using Jupiter in Cymax. And there's been two ways to do this in the past. There's the OBI Python module that I wrote a lot of code customizing it to do uh, a lot of different things. And that's what Cymax has used all along. But that module uses a web server to communicate with the Jupyter kernel. And that, that causes some challenges in getting it started and then some limitations on things like completion and inspection. And about three years ago now, um, there's a new module called Emacs Jupyter. And it uses a compiled library to use 0MQ as a messaging, um, as a way to message directly and natively with Jupyter kernels. And it offers a lot of advantages um, by not going through a external web server that then communicates with the kernel. We can have Emacs communicate directly with the kernel and get data directly back. So a few years ago, um, it was not that trivial to compile these, these kinds of extensions, especially on Windows. And so I haven't really pushed super hard, super fast to get to it. But for the last six to nine months, I've been trying to use the Jupyter Emacs uh, package on my Mac where it's it's not that difficult. So what I'll show you today is kind of an alpha version of what I think Cymax is going to transition to uh, at some point. Uh, the OBI Python is still default, uh, but you can find this Cymax Jupyter code to do what I'm doing today um, in, in the GitHub repo. Okay, so um, I'm going to skip down to uh, maybe we'll talk a little bit about um, what I have customized so that you have some sense of what's different. Um, the default header args are th the way you, you control the behavior of Jupyter Python. So I have mine set like this. Um, I'll talk about this both uh, setting in a minute. That is a Cymax specific setting. Uh, usually it's results. Uh, the results are output or value. And with with Jupyter Emacs, you can still use output or value, um, but you can use both to get the printed output and the value, which is basically how it looks in the Jupyter Notebook. Um, I set pandoc to be true, and that uses pandoc to try to convert HTML, LaTeX, other things into, into org mode format so that we can have uh, basically native org output. All right. Um, I also set it up so that there is one kernel per file. And the, the default uses one kernel for all files. And I find that confusing because I'm used to thinking if I open a file and start Jupyter in it, that the working directory is where that file is and not in some other place. And it causes a lot of confusion. And if you set variables in one file, you don't want, I don't want to contaminate uh, the variables in another file that might be the same. So I, I think it makes sense to have a separate kernel per file. And I also like when I close that file for it to kill the kernel. So Cymax does that. And I do it through, uh, through header args right here. So you can uh, use uh, JPS here as a YA snippet and it will expand and give you uh, the name of, of the um, Jupyter kernel that, that it's gonna use. Uh, okay, so it looks like I exp uh, added uh, Python to this, so no problem. Okay, so normally uh, this will automatically refresh and um, everything will be fine. All right, and then when I close this buffer, the it will kill this uh, this kernel for me. And then it seemed like some of the things in Jupyter Emacs or Emacs Jupyter were not working exactly the way you might expect. Um, so let me let me unadvise and show you what what that means. And actually, let's let's kill all of the all of the outputs uh, for this. So if if what I'm going to show you is what it looks like with vanilla Emacs Jupyter, and if you if you just run this, you get something that looks uh, pretty normal to me. We have this verbatim output. And what should happen if you say results equals raw is the colon should be gone and they're not. So out of the box, you, you don't, it, it seems to me that results raw doesn't work. 
and if we run this uh, this simax jupyter advise function then it will modify emacs jupyter so that you do in fact get the raw results here so most of what i've done is is advise a handful of functions to get things to be more like they were for me with obi python which i loved a lot and in some sense to get things that are more consistent with org babel so for example out of the box you get mixed output and value when you say results value and that's not consistent in my mind with way org babel works if you say results value then you should only get the last thing that is returned now return in jupyter is a little bit um, ambiguous uh, in in a python normally you would write an actual return statement and uh, or have an implied return statement what value here does for um, emacs jupyter and simax is it just takes the last the last line so if I say results value here, um, and I have print five and three minus five here, then all we get is minus two because it's the last line, all right? If I choose output, then that's all we're going to get, all right? So here we have print five, nothing will happen here, and uh, you can get only the five in this case because we're only getting the output. And to get the original behavior, I provide uh, both. So if I say results both here, then this one will show me um, A5 and the output of 18 and four. All right, and then um, it's maybe worth noting that I, I rewrote a Hydra that um, is, is formatted in these columns. So I'll show you what a bunch of these things are. But this gives us easy uh, access to inspect things, to uh, complete things, editing functions, kernel management. So if I want to, um, kill this kernel, then I just press K. And you see up here on the header line that it's actually running. Um, and if I say yes a couple of times, it goes away. Um, so that's pretty handy. This this only works, uh, you can call this anywhere. I have it bound to F12, which I have remapped to caps lock. So I just uh, press it with my, my pinky whenever I want. And that is uh, what happens when you press F12 in a source block. Okay, so from here I'll show you a couple of examples of things that it does that are much better than what we saw before and some new things that um, that I wasn't even aware of. So if I run this, um, I normally run things with control C, control C, and here we just import NumPy and we have, uh, we can access the help directly from uh, this question mark, or we can have np.lin space and I can either type alt i and access the inspection or if you don't remember that we press the hydra button and then it's this slash command here for inspect and that gets me to the help, uh, help there and down here we can also have the uh, source code so that's the two question marks here so that's pretty handy while you're uh, while you're writing and um, in here, if I'm at np.lin, since we've already executed this, we can press Alt-Tab uh, a couple of times, and then it will let us do some completion. So from here, it's aware of linalg or lin space, and we can just get uh, completion from it directly. I think also from here, you can press uh, Alt-Tab here, it reminds you. Meta-Tab is, uh, is the way to get to it. All right, so that's pretty helpful. Um, that's just noted here. You can have your cursor on on LinSpace and either type Alt A to inspect it or um, or use that that Hydra. All right, and then I showed you completion here. Even from NP dot, if I press Alt Tab a few times, it shows me all of the things that I can um, complete with, including whether they're functions or modules. Um, Etc. I could probably let's let's do G E O M to get to geometric space, and you could add add that in. So that's starting to turn this into a little bit more like um, some kind of integrated development environment that helps you um, with with your code. And from here, Alt I will show me the doc string for geometric space, um, which is pretty helpful. Okay, so plotting works pretty much like you would expect. Um, 
let's see, I think I'm going to delete this. There is a, an ongoing issue that the order of things is is not, not really guaranteed. Um, but one of the patches that I currently have in Cymax is, is to make the order come out uh, the right way. So here we have uh, some imports, we define some variables, and we make some plots. And if you run this, then in matplotlib, it does really what you would expect. It saves the images in uh, ob-jupyter and then displays them uh, down here. And the order of these, um, oh, I see it is, is a little bit different. So we do the prints last, but they come out first and the plots are um, up here. Let's see what happens if we inspect these. We can even inspect these variables. So this tells us we have an ND array. These are the values of that variable uh, and some information about the, the variable. So that works more or less like you would expect um, because these images are just being saved as PNGs and then Emacs is rendering them. Now Plotly is a little bit tricky. Plotly uh, renders the things in terms of HTML and, or interactive JavaScript, and it's normally done in a browser. So if I just try to do regular uh, Plotly here, we're going to uh, first wait a little while and then it probably is going to give us some output that is not very helpful. So it's either going to be HTML output or it's going to be some uh, some strange number that um, is basically a failure of Pandoc to convert it into HTML. So that's not very helpful. Um, and so the solution that I use is uh, is to use the pycsc.plotly library. So this is a sub-library of pycsc that I wrote and it, it basically changes the behavior of these things so that it will save an image that it will display and write the HTML to a file. So when we run this one, we should get a, a figure that we can see and we will see that there is an HTML file that's getting saved. surprised it takes that long, but it is making this figure, right? And then if I click on this, you can see the actual interactive uh, web file that, that we can use. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Um, we have this image to look at. This is a static PNG, and anytime you want to see the actual interactive version, you click on this. And in my mind, that's a pretty good compromise of interactivity, at least until um, Emacs is able to render this interactive HTML um, natively. That'll probably be like Emacs version 32 or something. I'm making that up, I don't know. All right, other things um, that over the past couple of years, I've kind of gone back and forth of, should I use a browser with Jupyter uh, Notebook or Jupyter Lab, or should I use Colab? because they have such good for support for things like Plotly and Pandas. Um, these days, the, the gap is closing and we can use Pandas natively in here and display things in a reasonable way. So here we're importing Pandas and we're going to uh, just display the Pandas data frame. Uh, it feels strange this is taking as long as it is, but this should import uh, insert a um, a org table, right? And it's a regular org table. You can do all kinds of things with it, um, like rearrange it, etc. So now this works basically natively, and it's pretty um, pretty easy to use pandas data frames. Uh, if we, you know, let's say f dot plot, this should make a little figure that pops up in. Uh, or, or not, let's see, what is the error? Oh, no numeric data to plot. Oh, that's because I have A's and B's here. Uh, all right, normally that would, that would make a plot. All right, so another thing that I've been interested in having all of this integration is to have these tables and the figures that I showed you actually have captions and names and attributes so that we use them inside of documents. So pycse.orgmode defines uh, several classes 
that allow you to do exactly what I just said. So here, for example, we're going to make a table that has uh, these rows and columns, and it will have a name and a caption and some attributes. And when I run this, it will output directly the attributes, the name, and the caption. And we can even use this already with OrGraph. Um, or data, and there there is a link to the file that we just generated um, from code. Uh, we can do the same thing with figures. So here is the figure class that gives it takes a file name, and you can give it a name, a caption, also some attributes, and this will uh, put in your captioned figure with with the name that you can um, that you could use. So. Org fig is is there, and um, you can see that it's a very helpful way to have your code actually output the figure in the way that you want it. And probably you would want to um, put exports results on here if you were turning this into a PDF so that you could uh, not see the code, or you would use a named block and have the results put in the manuscript where you want them. Um, let's see here. Maybe I should point out we use plot.close so that you don't see the figure twice. Um, if I don't do that, then what you get is the figure comes out twice because this is the one that is from our figure object and this is the one that uh, that's getting generated by, by the cell. So we just get rid of that by uh, putting that in there. And then here we can um, also have multiple figures. So here we have some, some things that are printed. Here are the, the two figures that I showed you before that have uh, labels and captions now. Um, this is just a regular org string that just is uh, adding some vertical space in there. Um, let's see, I already showed you a table. Oh, this is a table from a data frame. So the table can take um, all kinds of data in here and it's just using tabulate to generate this, I think. We can have uh, keywords and you can even have here, um, have it make a heading. So if you're, if you're trying to build up a document from, from code, we can make all of these pieces uh, and put them, put them together. Here's a comment, um, and that's probably the main things that are in there. I haven't tried to support all of the org syntax on this, just the ones that I use most commonly. All right, let's talk about exceptions. Uh, exceptions happen, and there um, are some nice ways to deal with it. So here, here we have a code block that you know has some prints, a variable, a parenthesis, um, here's a one divided by zero, and then we try to print some things, and if you run this, then we get uh, an error. And it's a syntax error. So if you press F12 here, and then press E for jump to error, then it jumps to this line where it thinks the error is. Now syntax errors are tricky. The actual error is up here, um, but this is the first place that, uh, actually right here is where the, the actual syntax error is, because there's no closing parenthesis. So let's close this and run it again. And now we get a an actual exception or another exception that is uh, zero division by zero division error. So again, here we can just press uh, F12E and it jumps directly to the line where that uh, where that is. And of course there's an exception here. I, I put something there to, to make it easy uh, to do that. But the, the idea is that it's uh, simpler to go from this trace back down here to the actual error um, that you see up here. So I like that. Um, I deal with errors quite, quite often, and it's pretty nice to be able to um, manage it. All right, so this is probably more of a uh, built-in feature of Emacs Jupyter, but the Jupyter kernel can return lots of different displays. It can return text slash org, uh, images, HTML, markdown, LaTeX, or plain text. And depending on how you set it up, you can choose which one you get. So here out of out of the box, 
we get the rendered LaTeX because it's higher in uh, priority than plain. And we get this nice image of what this integral looks like. We can get the actual LaTeX if we choose it. So we can say I want text LaTeX here. And if we run that, we get the actual LaTeX code, which might be useful for, for something. And we can also get the plain version. Um, this is here just uh, some fancy ASCII looking uh, art of that integral. So if you know about the different kinds of things that, that your objects return, we can, we can access them in, in these ways. And then other, um, other rich displays also mostly work. So here, if we look at a couple of the uh, rich displays, like a file link, and here this file link is going to end up showing as an image, right? So this, this just automatically renders as the image. Um, this image also automatically renders exactly the way you hope. And it looks like this is just going to be both of those uh, together. But not every, uh, every kind of, of object is convertible to org mode. Pandoc doesn't know everything. So if I try to do this one, this audio, then it just says the browser does not support the audio element. And that's because we're not in a browser. So we can kind of orgify these. We can add some code to generate uh, the right behavior for audio in the following kind of way. So first, um, we'll import from org mode. This is going to provide an org formatter that you can use. Then we get the IPython um, instance that we're working with. We'll get the um, orgf display formatter. So this, this is already defined up here. That's why we uh, can do it so simply. And then we just define for type by name. So we're going to say for, for this audio display, we're going to just uh, output the uh, this link that is a link to the file name associated with the audio. And so now if I run this again, instead of getting that error, I get a link and we'll play it, see what happens. This is opening some music thing. Testing, testing, testing. And you can hear it play. So you can add all kinds of things like this. If there is a way to turn your object into something that makes sense in org mode here, uh, it's just a, a link that I can use to play, then, uh, then it's fine. And some of those are already um, orgified. So I, I already made one for YouTube. So if you make a YouTube video here, then it just makes a link here that lets you open uh, to YouTube. And the internet is not working super fast, but it's uh, slowly kind of getting to load this, uh, this video. So this is a video I made in on linear regression. All right, so you can do uh, lots of things like that. Anything you can do that uh, makes a uh, text slash org output is a good candidate for rich display in native org format. All right, so let's talk about um, scratch space and, and the REPL. So the, the org buffer right here, I, or I view this as a scratch space on its own. I can just do anything I want, you know, print three, uh, do something. If I like it, I keep it. If I don't, uh, then I just delete it. But sometimes you might want to uh, be able to go into a separate uh, buffer that you could just get rid of uh, completely. So there's two ways to do that. Um, if we go to our, our Hydra here and just look under the kernel, there's something called scratch. And so if I press S over here, I get a scratch space. And I can uh, do control C, control C to execute this line. And let's say A equals five, print, I don't know, four times A. Uh, here it is going to evaluate that. We can, we can do just one region or one line, or we can do control C, control B to do the whole buffer and we see the, the output down here. So that's pretty nice, uh, and it's a good way to just play around, copy something, explore something. Uh, let's see what happens with this. 
So we can uh, check variables, uh, things of that sort. All right, you can also get to an actual REPL. So the REPL is, is like the IPython shell. So here it's looking at Z. So if I press Z, we get over here to the actual REPL and you can do all kinds of things like um, plot dot plot, one, two, four, five. And it actually shows over here. So we have the, the real live interactive um, shell that you can work in. And this is also a, uh, has potential for, you know, debugging, looking at plots, checking, checking variables, uh, etc. And you can do all of that without getting into your, your current buffer here. Um, so that's the, the REPL and the scratch. That's pretty nice. And you can also do kind of similar REPL-like interactions in a source block. So here, if I highlight this region and do control meta X, um, well, seems to think there is a, a syntax error. That's weird. Hmm, I don't know what that is. Here, let's try Control X, Control E. So that works. And then if I am on here and I type meta I, it should show me that A is equal to five. And if I run Control X, Control E on this one, maybe we have to do, put a print on there. Or let's try it up here, Control X, Control E. That will print it out as a three. All right. Something's not right with the highlight region. I don't know what. Um, we'll try it uh, maybe another day. Um, well, let's try killing the kernel. And see if that makes it work. Nope. All right, something strange there. We'll move on. Um, how about debugging in the REPL? So sometimes uh, you can define a function and there's something not quite right with it. So here we can define it. And now if I put a breakpoint line in here and go to the REPL and let's do uh, f of three, then it goes into this breakpoint and we, we're down here, we get an, uh, the interactive uh, Python debugger. So here I can look at uh, variations of three. I can see what the, the definition of X is. You can, I don't know why you would type two times X, but you can use the, the de debugger here. And if you step through it, I think maybe it's, then you can, um, you can step through the, this debugger and, and do different uh, debugging kinds of things in your, in your program. That's a somewhat of a weak, weak point for me. I'm more often going to put print statements or something, but I think it's pretty interesting. You can get to a debugger from org mode uh, in here. Uh, all right, and then you may need to do things with other people that don't use org mode. Um, you can use uh, I, this ox ipy notebook, which will export this. Um, I'll just run this uh, block here and do that. So this, this will turn the org file into a Jupyter Notebook and, uh, and then open it. So here you see we have a notebook. This is all of the text that you were looking at. Here's the code. So you can go through and uh, this is a, a regular IPython notebook that you can send uh, to other people. You know, some files are broken because there, there isn't a, a concept there or not an easy one anyway, uh, and so forth. Okay, so how about other languages? I've, I've focused mostly on Python um, here. Let me close this. Here we can check out uh, Julia. So Julia is the JU of Jupyter. And here, um, of course, you have to install Julia and then install the Julia kernel. Um, and up here I have set a session 
for it. And here, let's delete this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And this will start a uh, Jupyter kernel and run a Julia little program here to generate this Mandelbrot um, shape. So you can see down here, it's starting it up. Uh, all right, maybe not. Seems. Seems like it should work, it did before. some uh, some error I wonder if the the R version is going to have the same problem here also you have to install R then run this command and in theory this is starting up in R kernel oh, and this one works okay so maybe something's not going quite right in uh, in the Julia one let's see what what could that be Probably not going to figure it out uh, at this moment. It worked yesterday. I don't use Julia a lot. I'll probably have to fix something before I use it again. Um, okay, so let me wrap it up here. Uh, this is, how long are we going here? I don't know if I see a, oh, half an hour, so pretty long time. Um, a couple of things that are not fully resolved yet is that the the Emacs Jupyter package is written with pretty sophisticated uh, code. It has uh, some process filters that take input in the order that it gets it. It uses generic functions. And one of the things that it tries to do is handle uh, input you know, in the order it comes. But when you use Pandoc, it makes some of those things take longer than others, and that can mess up the order. Um, this is an issue 351 that I reported. And I, I have patched a version um, in Cymax that tends to get the right order by doing this Pandoc processing later than, uh, than earlier, but I can't guarantee that order is always going to be correct. And so the, the easiest thing to do is make sure you only have one thing coming out so the order doesn't matter. Uh, I'm talking about the order of results here. So like in this example, you would expect to see this, 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 in that order. And that is pretty much what we see, All right? We see a one, bold, L bold, M bold, two. Um, but out of the box, Emacs Jupyter puts these things last and uh, in reverse order. So that's probably going to get fixed in, in the main branch um, at some point. Where that is important is doing things like this, where you want to have um, display one, we have some HTML for this caption and text, and then the figure. And that's, if you're relying on the order, in this case, you know, we need these lines to be in this order to be important, uh, to be correct. Um, using these Jupyter Python blocks as input to other blocks uh, is was broken in Emacs Jupyter, uh, and it's, it's just sort of better right now in Cymax. So here's what I mean. Uh, we have a, a block here named JP. This returns uh, 18, and it gives us you know, it, what looks like a number here. And then if I want to use that as a variable to an Emacs list block, then what we get is uh, colon 18. So somehow the string, a string is coming from here to here, and it's, it's not doing you know, quite the right thing. Uh, and so if I say, you know, tried to divide this by two, I'm probably going to get an error because um, 18 is coming as a string, not as a float. And I haven't tracked down the exact place where that string, this, this is encouraging that at least the string is correct and we need to probably some wrapper somewhere that makes sure it gets a string and not or, uh, the number or table. Um, Similarly here, if we have, you know, this, this code is going to return some, uh, some data, 
when I run this block, I get a table like this. And I would expect that I could take this table and use it as data here. Um, and, oh, well, it looks better today. Uh, but what is that table? It's not this, 0, 1, 2, 1, 3, 4. Well, that's even more surprising. I have no idea what this is. Um, it does not seem related to this. Um, so these things don't work. Um, it's debatable if it if we should spend time making it work. Um, it works in every other part of Org Babel, so I feel like it should work here. And it would be like really common for me to do something here where I, I use pandas to do filtering and data science kind of analysis on a table and then do something in Emacs Lisp um, with those results. So so I, I'm pretty motivated to get this to work. Um, looking at this, I, I can see that this is this first row is one plus one across this and the second row is adding, this is two here and two here and yeah, something strange is going on in this that um, is pretty baffling. Um, yeah, so here here is what I would expect that I could be able to do, given this uh, this table here. If I use this named block here, um, then I can get zero one two one three four. So that's that's at least this data here. Uh, minus the header. So I would expect that to work, um, but it, at the moment it does not. And then I think the last thing here is widgets. Uh, widgets don't seem to work. There is a, a library that you can you can run uh, or compile to support widget support. Um, I'm not going to do it here because it just doesn't work. It, it either hangs or doesn't do anything. Um, and so uh, Widgets are not something I use anyway, um, but it's not clear what, what needs to happen. It requires Node and Java script and other things. All right, so I'll finish up here with what uh, my wish list. That, that means that uh, these are things I'll probably try to figure out how to make happen. Um, one thing I've experienced a lot is when you have long outputs, especially things that need fontification like XML or HTML or anything like that, it's, it's usually a disaster to print it into your buffer. Um, Emacs gets really hung up trying to fontify the long thing because of the way source blocks work. And so whenever we get long outputs, I, I would like to have some way to truncate that and maybe write the results to a file um, where you can look at it there and not look at it in, in org mode. Um, I don't know when that will happen. Um, it, it will take you know some some thinking about how to how to decide uh, when is when it's too long, how to customize that, etc. Um, I'd really like to be able to jump to the definition of variables or functions. Um, I, I've worked on that a little bit with this Cymax literate programming um, project, but this this needs to be updated uh, and maybe fine tuned to work specifically with uh, with Jupyter Python. And then um, maybe inspecting variables and function calls doesn't always do what I think. So if I run this one, if I have my cursor here and I do uh, meta i, it gives me documentation for the print function, not for a. And it doesn't seem to matter where the cursor is. I Once you're in a, it doesn't seem possible to get uh, or inside this print function nothing seems to give you uh, A. And I don't know if that's a feature of Jupyter inspection or if it's a feature of uh, Emacs Jupyter. So if I'm up here, I can get it, but if I'm down here, I can't. That seems confusing to me. So that's it um, for, for this. That is um, the sort of alpha version of Jupyter in Cymax. And probably by the end of the year, I will make that the default setting in Cymax for using Jupyter. I'll probably leave OBI Python in there. 
um, for people that aren't able or aren't interested in moving over to uh, Jupiter Emacs. But in my mind, it's it's definitely the future uh, or the next step in using Jupiter inside uh, inside work mode. All right. I hope that was uh, helpful for you. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.